Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us today for our Wake Up with Wasatch webinar. Today, we have Rich McDonald, Wasatch Crest Clinical Director, um, talking about how we use the level system at Wasatch Crest to help clients progress in treatment. So I will let Rich take us away. Awesome. Thanks, Kayla. Um, thanks, everybody, for being here this morning. Um, and Excited to talk a little bit about um, the level system and why we think it's important and, and I believe it's a crucial part of, of treatment um, really across all levels of care from residential to, to day treatment and intensive outpatient. It can make a big difference. So um, one of the challenges in residential treatment is always creating some structure and accountability, right? We have a, a schedule and making sure the staff is supporting that's scheduled by being on time and ending on time and um, doing our side um, or our part to make sure that there's that level and structure. Um, and then there, then we've got to create a way for uh, the clients to have some structure and accountability and to feel like they are making progress. It can be super overwhelming when somebody comes into treatment and they, they feel like they're really stuck. Um, in fact, that exact phrase I've heard, you know, I can't count how many times, and it really does. Um, we need to be able to help them see progress as they're making it and see the progress that so many times we see in them, but maybe they don't see in themselves. Um, and the level system is a great way to do that. Um, so what we've done at Wasatch Crest is built a level system in that helps um, support kind of our goals, and each area has a goal um and kind of a purpose to it so when we sat down initially to start kind of revamping some of the curriculum and updating a few things um our goal was to be intentional with everything that we do so what is it that we're trying to get um or trying to share with our clients um at the end of the day um you know for example um you know, a rec therapy outing. Now, is the, what's the purpose? Once in a while, bowling, um, and the purpose is to have fun. Um, other times, maybe rock climbing is used as an exercise to be present, or even floating down the Provo River might be used to, um, you know, understand there's something bigger than yourself um, that you really can't control. So, same thing with the level system. We really want to look and see what we've got um, and how, um, what are we trying to achieve at the end of the day? Um, so each of our areas we've got in, resi in the residential program, which I think I'll kind of talk more about um, today, we have four levels um, and we've also got an orientation level. So uh, orientation and, and we I put timelines together for kind of how they're progressing or appropriate kind of time frames for people to progress to the next level, but it's absolutely not set in stone. Um, the one that is typically pretty firm though is our orientation level. So that's essentially the first from admission to 72 hours, um, and it might be admission to 48 hours. Um, and this just gives us some time to get them situated, to get them oriented to the program, introduce them to their therapist, have them meet with our doctor, um, and really kind of, you know, it's, it's pretty scary walking into a house with a whole bunch of strangers and, um, you know, you've just gone through a really difficult period and you're saying goodbye to your family, who's also probably pretty upset with you often um, going into treatment. And we just want to make sure that they feel safe, calm and contained for that first uh, 72 hours. And then um, level one, uh, that's the first seven to 10 days, essentially, while they're with us. Um, and this gives us an opportunity there. We, we have a no contact rule um, for the first seven days in treatment. Um, my experience has been that allowing clients to focus only on what's going on here while they're in treatment and this experience especially the first seven days is crucial. It gives us the opportunity to, um, or gives them um, the ability to kind of disconnect a little bit. Um, you know, our tendency or, or what I, at least my tendency and the tendency I, I've watched with other clients um, or with clients throughout the years is 
we get here, um, the drugs and alcohol, we kind of get through, we maybe go to detox before we get here and suddenly we're in this situation and we're feeling really um, vulnerable and scared and we want to manage everything on the outside. And the reality is, is we can't handle a lot in the first seven days. Uh, you know, making a phone call and apologizing is not necessarily going to be any help at all. And sometimes it can be detrimental. Um, and so letting the family know that there's that, that uh, seven day period without uh, phone or computer and then letting uh, the client know, uh, it's a good way to kind of unwind and get yourself present and both feet planted in treatment. Um, you know, I do want to say that we give clients the opportunity if they have children that are minors and, you know, our goal is to focus the client and help them uh, really look at themselves and work on their recovery. It's not to um, have them disconnected with family. So the therapist has the option always to, um, you know, make a judgment call and let like a mom or dad call uh, their kids or whatever the situation is. We want to make sure that the uh, family at home, especially if their children aren't the ones, um, there's no reason to, to hurt them any further by uh, having them scared about mom and dad. So we will facilitate that. Um, but level one really is a time to reflect. Um, the top or, or the theme of level one is, is reflection. Um, what we want is uh, clients to be able to take a step back um, and look at where they've been, how they got here, and you know their motivation, right? So we talk about the stages of change. Um, I think that reflection is crucial to get commitment. And you know, reflecting does not mean addressing trauma from the past in the first seven days, obviously. It just means like really understanding what it is that that they want and why and how they got here. And there's several stories. One of them includes a um, therapeutic assignment called My Story. So a lot of places will use um, the autobiography, which is a great exercise. Gets clients uh, a chance to to reflect and really look at you know where they came from. But I found over the years that sometimes you'll get a one page. Uh, autobiography or a 20 page autobiography. And uh, this is essentially an option that we use that kind of keeps everything directed. It, it uh, asks a series of questions and when it's done, it can be shared with their peers and their therapist. And it gives us good insight into where they came from, how they got here. And it doesn't so much focus on stories of drug use and, you know, the, the point was to help them focus and, and look at what was important and then also not to glorify drug use or, or you know, alcohol use. Um, keeps them really focused. It's been a really good way to, to get them going. Um, our level two is perspective. Um, this is just a higher level view. Um, we want them to, um, you know, where do they want to go? What obstacles do they have to overcome to have the life that they really want? And, you know, what is that like? Like, how can we help them see um, what they're passionate about and what it is that's going to make their life meaningful? Um, as well as to start trying to see the perspective from their loved ones and help, help them understand, um, you know, maybe why or how the family dynamic and that family system has gotten affected and, and by addiction and what relationships are going to really need, need that work so they can have connection and sobriety long term. Um, level three uh, is all about community. So level three, we spend um, time with uh, the clients really building a sober support network identifying communities that are safe um, and activities that are safe, um, identifying who's going to support you in your recovery. So that be, that's where we've been talking from essentially the biopsychosocial assessment to level three, um, you know, what their game plan is so we can help with building a solid aftercare plan. By the time they're in level three, really, we should have a good idea, like, Who's the therapist if they need an individual therapist that's going to support their recovery? 
what 12 step program or meetings are they interested in? How can we really build up that community? They know about the alumni program and they're really getting the opportunity to start setting an example for the people that are in the, the levels below. Um, and then level four, uh, it is about planning and like really digging down for the, for the details, right? Um, creating a, a uh, individualized or personal recovery plan um, and being able to uh, identify what recovery looks like, what their work is going to look like, how are they going to um, live in a new life of, of recovery, and how can we support that and helping them also see that they're going to need a lot of support. 30 days in residential treatment is not the cure-all, right? Um, if you're a professional uh, in the treatment industry, you understand that uh, oftentimes families say, here you go, fix them. Um, and we really need to, to look at those key relationships and um, plan specifics and structure. Uh, somebody once told me you can't have sobriety without um, structure and accountability. And I love that. Um, what I realized was, you know, without having something in place where you're expected to show up and having people in your life that you're not willing to, that one more, that, that provide one more barrier um, for not willing to um, use drugs and alcohol. Um, it's essentially about protecting a life and building a life that you want to protect. It's a, it's a crucial part of that plan. Um, and throughout the level systems, there's um, things like uh, our rec therapist uh, will sit with each client, do their treatment plan, but beyond that, help them set up um, a list of leisure activities and ways that they can um, build some recreation and downtime and self-care into their uh, program of recovery, but also, um, you know, the therapist is working with family and maybe we can get them to commit to Al-Anon or another support group so that they can start working on um, the family can start working on themselves, which you know oftentimes is so important. That dynamic shifts so quickly um, when somebody becomes addicted, uh, and we need to get it back to the the appropriate roles in each family. And um, you know, oftentimes the significant others become more of a uh, you know policing the addict or a parenting role. Um, so if we're not addressing those others other sides of the street too, it can be problematic. Um, and, you know, what we've really found <clears throat> is that by having a level system, we've got, um, so we've got level five, six, and seven in our day treatment, and it essentially goes to eight. Um, and they all have specific intentions, but while they're, you know, what we found is for getting them um, pointed in the right direction and being able to um, sign off on the, the progress uh, and have them be able to see um, that they are making progress. Uh, but it also gives us one other tool that I haven't mentioned yet, and that's kind of the ability to hold them accountable. So the first thing I thought when we uh, opened the treatment center eight years ago was, I want to build a non-punitive program. This is not, we're working with adults who have addiction, and if we believe it's a disease, um, we, we need to work with our, our patients or clients to, um, we have to have some way to hold them accountable, but not punish them. Uh, and that was really important to me. Like what is the, how do we find intrinsic motivation um, and help them see, uh, you know, what they need to do to move forward in life. And, and I think, you know, not progressing in levels or stepping back a level and redoing an assignment or, um, you know, the privileges that come and the freedom that come with uh, progressing in the levels can be stepped down for three days or a week. Um, but this was a way for us to not necessarily punish the clients, but have them pause for a minute, take a couple steps back and reevaluate how they, what they've worked on before and how they can avoid um, maybe some of the, you know, thinking errors or um, avoid some of the things in the past that have really been landmines in their recovery. 
Um, and, you know, overall, I believe that um, having the structure and the levels is a, th that accountability piece becomes really difficult when you're working with adults. Um, we can't, you know, I don't, I do not like the idea of essentially writing a client up or, you know, putting something in their path that they have to try one more thing to, to give them, um, I guess, you know, punishment. Like we have to understand that it's in early recovery, we make a lot of mistakes and it really is about the accountability and doing the, and holding them accountable with love. And I think level systems um, can be a great way to put that structure uh, into a program. So, Kayla, do we have any questions? No, we don't have any questions, but that was great, Rich. Thank you so much. Uh, next up, on August 27th, we're going to be hosting a webinar on creating aftercare plans for lasting recovery. And Rich will be back to present on that. In the meantime, if you want to learn more about us, our website is wasatchcrushtreatment.com. And then that's our admissions phone number, which is 24-7. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. Thanks, Rich. Yeah, thank you. Good day.